presence a lot. Guys walking into a room, the way they carry themselves. When I watch the Atlanta Braves, and it can't be understated, oh, he plays like a 10-year veteran. It's not even that. No. It's this, like, the game's slow to him. The great players have the ability to slow the game down, and it appears that Michael Harris is playing a slow game. Yeah. I want to say this. 56 and 23 with him in the starting lineup, 22 and 25 without him. He has been impressive, man. one of the biggest yeah. difference makers. Him, a lot of the young cats, Vaughn Grissom, Spencer Strider, Kyle Wright coming into his own. So let's dive in and chronicle what makes him so successful. Because when you break him down, he does so many things like elite on a baseball field. But you can't help but think, and Cliffy, oh, you played against AJ. <laughs> Yes, I did. When you look at the back of Andrew Jones's baseball card and he was patrolling center field, listen, I never played with a guy that can control a game on the defensive side of the ball. Pause this real quick. Bring me up the first board. I want to compare 1999 Andrew Jones and if we do 1998, I'm right. sorry, player comparison, 162 game average in his 20, uh, year 21 I'm season. That, bro. And I know a lot of this is betting on to come right here, but it's, oh, but it's very, very similar. Yeah. AJ was one of those guys, and he could potentially at some points hide in that lineup with right. Shep and Chipper he and all hit, those he guys. He didn't hit at the top, right? He hit like kind of fifth, yeah. but he never came out. The one thing I always say about Andrew Jones, seemed like Bobby Cox would always give us a, give the big dogs a day off on a Sunday day right. game, right. and he'd walk in and be like, Andy, you in there, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Michael Harris. He needs to be in there for this ball club. He does. So let's dive in on why he's been so successful. Okay, first off, he comes up to the big leagues. He's holding his hands high. Then all of a sudden, Kevin Seitzer talks to him in Arizona about potentially he was getting beat a little bit. Because when you're up here, you're trying to eliminate moves, right? So there was a lot going on in his swing. D hey, real quick, though. Give it to wait, me. Before you get the... Because when he came up, I thought he was going to be like the defensive guy. He was making a ton of plays, and I'm like, oh, they needed him in center for this defense. Yeah. He was a swing and miss. He was missing a lot of stuff at the plate, but it, it was sort of like overlooked because his defense was stellar. On he allowed level. everybody to kind of yeah. assume their positions, right? They dropped his hands in Arizona. Gotcha. Back in late May, early June. Snicker had a team meeting, said, boys, it's time to roll. Yeah. That's a huge adjustment huge. to make midseason. And what has it led to? Okay, let's start. What does he do aggressively well? Left on left right there. 99 miles an hour <laughs> opposite field bomb. Mm. So the reason we're chronicling the miles per hour is the fact that this guy has... Look at the has, boys on the bench. You can't beat him to the spot. So pause this real quick. Bring up the 95 plus board. Take a look at this. Highest average on 95 mile an hour plus pitches this entire season. It's a young man's game, right? Look at these two. You better pay attention to that, people. I'm telling you, that that right there is different. You got Alex Verdugo, Matt Olson, two on the same team. Andrew Vaughn, who's leading off for the White Sox. And Will Smith, by the way, Will Smith and the Dodgers, 86 wins. Yeah. We got to talk about them all week next week. I don't think they near, get a nearly enough run on this show as they should. All right, let's dive back into the tape because he does other things unbelievably well. Taiwan that's, Walker, that's... 92 miles an hour, 2-1. Nah, I'm not looking to get out in front. I'm not worried about getting beat. You can't That's an easy that, swing. Backdoor breaking ball in PNC. You know how hard it is to go opposite field there. Look at the hands. Look at the big Behind the ball. Not even think about pulling. I pause this. Yep. yep. Bring up the opposite field board. Check this out. Highest slug percentage to the opposite field. Look at Austin Slater sneaking Whoa. in there with the Giants. Right. Franimal, Wilson Contreras, Franimal. he's on this board yeah. as well. Love when, this board, man. Listen, this I know there's there's different ways to attack hitting. Some guys, you were, you were a pull guy. I was an opposite I field guy. I wish I could He's got have it all. just shifted over a little bit. It, when I watch him now, I wish I had that where I just saw there and I wasn't here all the time. Because I now I understand. But you, you can see it right here. Follow me. Look where his bat is at. Yeah. Look, that is what you need when you're talking about opposite field. That's the only way you're going to drive the ball, in my opinion, to the opposite side. You, 
You, there's no way. I mean, in my time of playing Chipper, maybe, because he kind of, you know, stepped and was here, but his hands were here, yep. and he kind of lagged them a little bit. But when you're watching that, that stands out to me as the only way you're going to get your leg up here, down, and then, like, and that ball is going to come off. But it has something behind it that's totally different than a lot of guys. That's the difference. Bring up the spray chart for him. Take a look at this extra e extra base hit spray chart. It's all over the place. So he's one of those guys like he can't really defend. Can't shift. Kind of unshiftable. We talked about Jordan Alvarez. Okay, so he hammers high velocity. Right. He hammers the ball to the opposite field, which keeps him on everything. What else does he do extremely well? Let's dive back in. Oh, did we know he's one of the best base runners in the entire game as well? One of the better defenders. We just Ooh. showed, Lauren, Lauren Gardner showed that he could get on the mound and My probably close the game back. out. He looked back like, how did he make that throw? He was going the other way. Stop and throw a ball home. And it's, ve it's very simplistic. So bring up the last board because this sums it up for me. When I saw Eric Nays put this in my email, I was like, this has to make the show. Players to rank in the 85th percentile or better in X slug, outs above average, and sprint speed. Basically, the best of the best. You got Mike Trout, yeah. expected slug, outs above average right there, and sprint speed. You got Mike Trout, Byron Buxton, and Michael Harris the second. How did the Braves do this you all know what? the time? I got to go back to the homer <clears throat> in Miami. It was a game. Was 99 left 99. on left. I've been so I, I, I can't get over it. D, look at this. I know it's missing middle of the plate. He could have did anything with Look at his look reaction. At he knew that ball was going. That's a that is a bomb in that ballpark. But who else knew it was gone? The boys in the dugout was like, that's it. Look at the look. boys in the dugout on top step going, I know. And he said, give me that money. This He's is before he got the 72 gigantic. This is before he got the 72. He was like, this is what y'all are going to get for a long time because I'm this good. And the way he comes out of the box, right field doesn't even exist to him unless you throw a ball down and in. I just love that right there. That should be on the wall somewhere.